Hello everyone, my name is Juan Ospina and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Center for Advanced Power System at Florida State University working in the Decisions and Secure Systems Lab. Today I'm going to be presenting a demonstration of how we can use real-time co-simulation environments to evaluate the impact of cyber attacks, more specifically time delay attacks in cyber physical energy systems. The title of the presentation is Trustworthy Cyber Physical Energy Systems, Time Delay Attacks in a Real-Time Co-Simulation Environment. Let's jump right in. Before understanding what are cyber physical energy systems, we need to first understand how modern electric power systems are facilitating the integration of modern electronic devices, such as intelligent controllers, real-time measurement devices, and other technologies such as distributed energy resources or DERs. Some of the advantages that these technologies bring to the table are related to the security, efficiency, stability, and reliability of the EPS. The integration of these components is transforming the all passive EPS into cyber physical energy systems that integrate information and communication technologies with operational technology and physical devices. So as time goes on and more novel technologies get introduced, cyber physical energy systems are becoming more complex to study and analyze. In essence, testing and evaluating the performance and operation of these systems is challenging. It is very hard to test the scenarios or novel controllers on real sections of the systems since service cannot be interrupted or degraded for these purposes. Or we can risk also damaging real equipment by evaluating cyber attack or fault scenarios that can put in danger these assets. So one excellent alternative to using re the real system is the use of real-time co-simulation test beds for evaluating the operations of cyber physical energy systems. So in order to understand how to perform real-time co-simulation of cyber physical energy systems, we must first understand how to model the different components that make up the CPES. These components can be divided into two different layers, the cyber system layer and the physical system layer. In the cyber system layer, we find all the devices related to the information and operational technologies, so in other words, the communication network. Here we find components such as hubs, modems, routers, and switches, and also we need to define the corresponding communication protocols used by these devices. In electric power systems, the most commonly used communication protocols are IC61850, DMP3, and Modbus. In our case, we're going to use the DMP3 communication protocol. On the other hand, the physical system layer is where we find the models related to the physical components of the cyber physical energy system. These are the transmission and distribution lines, embedders, PV panels, energy storage devices, and sensors and actuators that exist in the physical domain of the system. We can model this layer using offline simulation, which is either slower or faster than real-time, or in a real-time environment. The main advantage of real-time simulation is that real hardware components can be interfaced with the simulated environment, and they will not notice the difference with a real system. It is as close as we can get to the real world. In this demonstration, we focus on presenting the impacts that a time delay attack has on a microgrid system, which can be considered as a cyber physical energy system. In essence, a time delay attack can be generally considered as a data availability attack where attackers try to destabilize a compromised cyber physical energy system by delaying either the measurements or the control commands coming from or going to the physical layer of the CPS. We can see this clearly on the figure seen on the right, where we can observe the mathematical formulation of a generic CPS and how an attacker can alter the measurements Y or controls U by delaying them by D time steps. The formulation presented on the left shows us how the time delay attack can be represented mathematically, where FD represents the time delay function generated by the attack, SR represents the compromised signal, which can be either U or Y, and D represents the corresponding time value by which the affected signal is delayed. In this slide, we can observe the experimental setup used to evaluate the impact of a time delay attack in a microgrid system. The physical layer of our microgrid was modeled in a real-time environment using OpenRT and eMegaSIM, while our cyber layer or communication network was modeled using Exata CPS. The physical layer of the microgrid is composed by a generator rated at 1 megawatt, a lithium-ion energy storage rated at 100 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt hours, a share of a load L1, which is the load that the controller needs to shed to avoid frequency stability problems when eye landing, and two other non-controllable loads L2 and L3. On the other hand, the cyber layer of the microgrid was modeled where all the devices except the microgrid controller 
were modeled as the MP3 outstation, while the microkey controller was modeled as a DMP3 master. In this case, we present two attack scenarios, where in the first scenario, a two-second time delay attack is launched to delay the frequency measurements coming from the shareable load to the microgrid controller at the time when the microgrid I lands from the main grid. In the graph seen on the right, we can observe the impact that this time delay attack has on the system. As observed, when no attack exists, the microgrid sheds the load L1 due to insufficient generation, but when the time delay attack occurs, this shedding action is delayed which in turn causes the frequency to drop to around 58.5 Hz. In the second scenario, which is the one that we are going to show with more details in the demo video, we demonstrate how a sustained time delay attack of 30 seconds can be catastrophic when launched in a vulnerable microgrid system. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo video. Let's start with the demonstration. Here you can observe the Opal RT models designed in Simulink. The real-time simulation will run with 50 microseconds timestamp, so let's first talk about the physical models. Here you can observe the microgrid models are under the physical model block and the DMP3 interface connections that are connected to the communication network model in Exata CPS. Inside the physical model block, you can observe all the physical components that make up the microgrid. We have the connection to the main grid, load 2 and load 3, and the shareable load that the main controller needs to shed when I land in from the main grid. We also have the energy storage and the generator. On the left side, you can see the master controller with a function that is designed to shed the load when the received frequency from the outstation goes below 58.5 Hz and the outstation that is providing the frequency me measurements to the master controller. Going one step back, we can see the blocks needed to interface the physical models with the DMP3 communication nodes that are in turn interfaced with the nodes modeling the communication emulation software Exata CPS. Now let's see the console of the experimental setup. In the console is where we are going to measure the frequency of the microgrid and all related measurement values such as the state of charge of the energy storage, the power up of generation, and other. Here is where also we are going to observe the impact of the time delay attack has in the frequency of the microgrid system. Now let's see the cyber layer or communication network modeling in Exata CPS. Here you can see all the nodes in the system, but the ones that we are going to focus in these demonstrations are node 1 and node 2, node 1 being the master controller and node 2 the outstation of the shareable load. Let's start with the real-time co-simulation of the microgrid. First, we fire up the emulation of the communication in Exata CPS, and as you observe, all the nodes are reachable by the master controller. Now at the same time, let's load and compile the physical model of the microgrid in RT Lab. After the loading and compiling of the model is completed, we can execute the model. At this time, the real-time co-simulation is running, and we have started to see data being exchanged by the DMP3 outstation and the master devices. Currently, our microgrid is connected to the main grid, so you can see that the frequency measure does not vary, and the breaker of the shareable load is connected. This is represented by the number one shown in the top block. Let's check the measurements in the scope. As you can see, the frequency is not very much since we are still connected to the main grid. Now let's island the microgrid from the main grid, and let's observe how this changes the stability. As you can see, now the frequency fluctuates more, and we can see it in more detail using the scope. It is important to mention that in order to show the impact of the time delay attack in a running real-time system, we designed the experiment in a way that the main controller will shed the load only when the frequency goes below a certain threshold, in our case 59.3 Hz, and we'll reconnect it when the frequency goes back to nominal 60 Hz. We understand that this may not be the way microgrid protection works in a real scenario, but for demonstration purposes, we designed the experiment in this way. So we can clearly show how well a time delay attack can affect the system and not permit the controller to shed the load due to the delay of the measurements received. That is why you see the frequency of the system fluctuating, and this is because of the shareable load being connected and disconnected of the respective thresholds. Now we can launch the time delay attack from the cyber layer of the Exata CPS, so we can go to attacks, modify packets, and load the 30 seconds time delay attack. Now we can just wait for the right timing to execute the time delay attack. The right timing will be when the frequency is going down, thus the shareable load is still, still connected, but the frequency measurement have not reached the shedding threshold. So we launch the time delay attack, and you can clearly see how the frequency keeps going down and the microgrid has been compromised to the point that damage to the equipment in the system could exist. The microgrid will need to go offline and the microgrid users will experiment a blackout.
So, as discussed in our presentation and demonstration, cyber-physical energy systems are complex systems and real-time co-simulation environments can be very effective tools to evaluate their operation. In essence, real-time co-simulation testbeds allow us to evaluate cross-layer impacts of different cyber and physical attacks, and this is something that we wanted to demonstrate during this demonstration. More specifically, our demonstration focused on demonstrating the potential impacts a time delay attack can have on cyber physical energy systems such as vulnerable microgrid systems. With this, we end our demonstration. Thank you very much for your time. And for more information, please feel free to contact us or visit us at the following link. Have a great day.